started my first real business at the age of 14 called Veyron Technology, which was a web designing business. Didn't want to sell in school, sell to teacher, didn't want to make the you know five, ten quid. So I went off to the city and within the first two weeks made over two thousand pounds profit just for going out there and trying to think that hey, I can do something different, something big in life. And what happened was with Merrill Lynch being my first clients, they came back to me at the age of sixteen and said, Sabro. We've been following your journey for the past two years. You're born and raised in the borough of Tower Hamlets, where people often see the crime, the violence, the drugs, and the abuse as a way forward. And yet, you were, whilst in school studying, you were able to do something different, running your own company. So what they did, they gave me the opportunity to go out, go to, to New York, and learn how to trade in the stock market. So at the age of 16, I became a part-time trader in the London Stock Exchange. And that was an unbelievable experience. A lot of young people were coming up to me and asking me, hey, several. You're from this area and at the age of 14, you were able to set up your own business. And I thought, how can I inspire these young people? Give them something tangible. So that inspired me at the age of 17 to write my first book called The World at Your Feet. I approached 40 different publishers to get the book published and I got rejected by each and every one of those 40 publishers. But what happened, within nine months, I sold over 42 and a half thousand copies of the book. You have Canary Wharf right beside us, right inside Tower Hamlets, and you have the city just a footstep away. And the amount of money they're earning within Canary Wharf and the city are in the thousands a week. And the amount people are earning in Tower Hamlets is not enough to even pay a weekly amount in rent. It's a very, very deprived community where a lot of young people, often those who are going to, to state schools and who are trying to, to learn, don't often see that as the only way forward in life because they think that that won't be enough for them, especially in this borough. So that's what it, that's the drive that gives them to, you know, lets them go into the crime, the violence and the drugs and the abuse. It's not, not to say that, hey, you know, I've not experienced any of that because especially in my early age and I've seen my you know, parents be victim of crime and violence and it's been a horrible, horrible scene. But I'm not just speaking on behalf of the Bangladeshi community. There are a lot of people out there here in Tower Hamlet just thinking, hey, I can't do this, I can't do that because there's no self-belief in them. But if they do do it and you know, they take that first step forward and it's often that first step is the biggest worry for them. Once they take the first step and they fail, that's it, they just give up, totally, completely give up. And that is, that is the issue we face here. And my you know, family has been a huge victim of that, setting up their own businesses, trying to jump over the first hurdle and just collapses. And that's where they think that life is over. And that is a huge inspiration for me, to be the opposite. To not just jump over the first hurdle, but continue on with the race until there isn't, you know, until I cross that finish line. It's easy. My older son, and he's doing everything. He's so, I'm so proud of him.